Providing the liquidity is a fashion and is a very popular way nowadays to get some extra cash and some people claim that they use this method to get some passive income. But if you are new to the process and you've never tried doing it before, then you might ask yourself, where is the catch? And is there one? Well, the answer is yes, there is one, and it is called the impermanent loss. And people talk about impermanent loss, you can find information about it on the internet, but not everybody understands it. And it is super important to understand it if you decide to provide the liquidity. So in this video I'm going to talk about impermanent loss. I will try to explain in as simple language as possible about what this risk is, how to calculate the impermanent loss, and also ways of how you can avoid it. Or if you cannot avoid it, then at least minimize it. So if that's something that interests you, then please keep watching this video. Hello guys and welcome back to my channel, my name is Anastasia. On this channel I talk about investing and especially investing for beginners. So before I explain to you how impermanent loss happens and what it actually means, there are two main things that I think are very important to understand. First of all is that the impermanent loss is called impermanent for a reason. It is called impermanent because it is not permanent. And it becomes permanent only if you decide to withdraw the funds when you experience the impermanent loss. There is a chance that if you don't withdraw the funds at this moment and you keep providing the liquidity, then the impermanent loss will disappear. Of course, you always have to consider the chance that the impermanent loss will become even bigger, so you have to understand this risk as well. The second thing that you have to know is that the impermanent loss doesn't happen only because you are providing the liquidity. If you are experiencing the impermanent loss whilst you are providing the liquidity, it probably means that you would also lose some money if you just kept uh, the coins to yourself if you didn't start providing the liquidity. The impermanent loss though means that by providing the liquidity you lose more money than if you never started providing the liquidity and just kept your coins in your wallet. So this is the difference. The impermanent loss is not something that happens because you are providing the liquidity, but it is the difference in profits that you could get if you never started providing the liquidity. Okay, so now let's talk about why impermanent loss happens on the first place. When you start providing the liquidity, you put your tokens into the liquidity pool. And as a rule, the liquidity pool consists of two tokens, and the proportion of each token within this pool is 50-50. You can also find pools with other proportions, but 50-50 is the standard example, that's why we will talk about it. The proportion between the tokens always has to stay the same, so it always has to be 50-50. But the price of each token can be different depending on the platform. So you have different exchange platforms in cryptocurrency world, you have, for example, Binance, um, Coinbase, PancakeSwap, Uniswap, SushiSwap, etc. And on each of these platforms, the price of the coins can differ. There are people, traders, who look for the opportunity to buy some coins at a cheaper price on some platforms and then sell them at a higher price on the different platforms. For example, if you can buy a coin A for $50 on Coinbase, you can do it and then sell it for $55 on PancakeSwap. This situation is called the arbitrage opportunity. And it exists everywhere, not just in cryptocurrency, but in the stock market in general. Experts say that in the perfect market conditions there would be no arbitrage opportunities, but we don't live, we don't have perfect market conditions. That's why they always exist. So what this trader does, he buys as much coins at a lower price of a certain pool as possible. The system is automated, so he cannot buy all of the coins at the same price, because every time he buys a coin, the price of the other coins in this pool grows, so he can buy only a certain number of coins for a profit. And then, if he keeps on buying these coins, he will do it at his own loss. But whilst this trader keeps on buying the coins of a certain liquidity pool, the price of the coin in this liquidity pool changes. And this is when you, as a provider of the liquidity, experience the impermanent loss. It is simple maths. I mean, maybe it's not that simple, but it is maths. 
and there is a special formula that will help you to calculate the permanent loss that you will experience if the price of the coin that you provided the liquidity with will change and the percentage of your impermanent loss. But I honestly don't know why someone would need to calculate the impermanent loss themselves, because nowadays online there are a lot of calculators that will do it for you. I will attach the link to some of the calculators below in the description box below this video, but in general you can just google the impermanent loss calculator or impermanent loss online calculator and you will see many results. I will show you one just as an example in this video. So this is how it looks and it's super easy. All you have to do is to write the price of each coin before you start providing the liquidity and when you decide to withdraw your funds and it will show you the impermanent loss that you will experience. If you don't understand calculators and you still find it difficult, if you are a visualizer and you like to see pictures, there are also a lot of graphs that you can also find online. And again, I will attach the links below, but this is one of them. And you can see that the, when the price of each coin changes significantly, there is a chance that you will lose almost everything that you've invested. And again, remember that if you were just holding on to your coins, you would probably also lose some money, but you wouldn't lose as much as whilst you are providing the liquidity. I agree, it's a little bit complicated and confusing, but when you get your head around it, it actually makes total sense. So again, if you find graphs difficult, then on Binance Academy page, there is an article that explains impermanent loss, and I think it's a brilliant article that I definitely recommend you to read. And they have a very good explanation of the graph, where they show how big your impermanent loss will be, depending on how much the price of your tokens will change. And remember that we are talking about crypto tokens, we are not talking about fiat money. If you think about fiat money, then dollar will cost more or less the same almost all the time, it's a stable coin. But if we're talking about crypto coins, even Bitcoin, but especially some new coins, then the price will change significantly in a matter of one day. So a drop of 85% is pretty possible in the crypto world. Now let's talk about the ways of how you can avoid or at least minimize the risks of the impermanent loss. Okay, the way number one is to invest into stable coins. As I've already said, there is always more than one token in the liquidity pool, at least two. So you want to see the stable price of the both tokens. You want both of them to stay the same or both of them to go up. You don't want your tokens to change the price relative to each other. So for example, if only one of the tokens rises in its value, then you will still experience the impermanent loss. If you decide to provide the liquidity, you do depend on the price of both tokens, not just one. And it's for that reason your tokens have to be more or less stable. They need to be on the market for some time, you must know that there is a stable demand and a stable supply, and you must understand the future of these coins at least more or less. Unfortunately, there is a downside of this way of minimizing your risks, because usually these liquidity pools are quite popular, so they the APY, the rewards that you get for providing the liquidity in these pools, are relatively low. Your rewards are high when the risks of losing the money are high as well. So to summarize this point, it is recommended to provide the liquidity for stable coins and not new coins. The second recommendation is to provide the liquidity in pools where the proportion of each token is not 50-50. As I've already said at the beginning of this video, 50-50 is the proportion in the majority of the liquidity pools. But you can find some pools with the ratio of 80 to 20 or even 98 to 2. And there is a theory, it's not a theory, there is also math behind it, that the bigger the difference in these percentages is, the smaller the impermanent loss will be. So ideally, of course, you would find the liquidity pool with 98 to 2 proportion of each tokens in the liquidity pool. The third way of how you can minimize the risks is to find the liquidity pool with more than two tokens in it. And again, there is a mess behind it and you can read about it. I'm not going to explain it to you because I don't quite understand it myself. I'm not a mathematician. But it is a fact that the more tokens there are in the liquidity pool, the smaller the chances are of you experiencing the impermanent loss. There are the liquidity pools that consist of eight or more tokens, so keep on looking for those. And the next way of how you can minimize the risks is by finding the liquidity pool with high rewards. In this situation, you would hope 
hope that high rewards that you'd get at the end of providing the liquidity will cover your losses from the impermanent loss. But again, if you are looking only for high APYs, that would probably mean that the tokens that you are going to provide the liquidity for are new and not stable. So you have to find a balance between a good APY and the stability of the tokens that you are going to invest in. Okay, guys, I hope the idea and the concept of the impermanent loss became a little bit clearer to you. Please let me know in the comments if you have any more questions and if you like this video then please click the like button and also consider subscribing to my channel if you want to see more videos like that. Thank you so much for your time and attention today and I hope to see you soon in my next videos. Bye-bye!